Okay, hold on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How many of you came to celebrate Jesus? Amen. If he came in the room, what would you do? You'd stand to your feet. You would begin to worship. And some of you, would, some, I mean, we'd fall on our face, but there's a time. But there's a time that he needs to be celebrated. There's a time that we need to celebrate. And Rosh Kadesh, that's a Hebrew word for the head of the month. That's, this is the head of the, the, uh, the, the Hebrew month of Shavuot. Today is Rosh Kadesh. That means what they did, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit during, uh, during the message, but I want you to know that they came together to see what the Lord was going to say about that, this month. And so because they're all, do you know that, the, that, that our life is defined? Do you know how time is defined? It's by your life cycle. And if you don't get on the cycle of the Lord with his feast and his time, you miss the perpetual blessing that he has for you. That's why you do up and down, up and down, up and down. We go, come in and then we go out and we come in and then we go out because he wants us on an even keel. And when we began to learn to operate in that perpetual blessing, moving from month to month, week to week, month to month, a year to year, cycle of feast to cycle of feast, you will begin to see an evenness come out in your life and balance begin to happen and you will no longer be on a roller coaster ride of life under the circumstances do you understand and so when we're coming in on a first fruit uh, of the or the head of the month the Rosh Kadesh you need to celebrate I mean you need to really celebrate you know what's wrong with the church today you know why you come into churches that are dead because there's no celebration the enemy has said, oh, you have to be reverent and put your hands down and sit down. The devil is a liar. There is a time for that, but there's a time you need to celebrate Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one that delivered you out of the hand of the enemy. He is the one that put breath in your body this morning, and you need to praise him with that breath. You need, we need to get to that place. Come on, make a shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. We're victorious because of him. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you, I, I have two different um, slides here or presentations because I want to explain to you about first fruit or a first fruit principle that we celebrate on the head of the month or, the, or from the Jewish calendar. So I want, to, I want you to understand what it is. It's the time to advance the kingdom. It's, it's a, it, it creates a warring tribe that sins, governs, transfers generationally Builds and finishes. Okay? Do you understand? Okay, I'm going to try to teach today. <laughs> you like it when I teach or preach? Both. Both. Be a treacher? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Th this is why we do it. I want to lay this foundation for some of you who have questions about why we do it. I want to give you biblical reference so that you don't have to struggle with it. Okay, so that you know it's biblical. Okay, we study the Hebrew month to keep us in time with God and how he moves. To change our mindset, to think like a Hebrew. That's the mind of Christ. Guess what? Jesus was a Jew. He was a Hebrew. Did you know that? And so they had their own culture. And if we don't understand sometimes what that culture was, we'll read the Bible and we'll miss it and we'll misinterpret it. That's why we have a lot of things going on in the church that put down women, oppress uh, addi people who have been addicted, oppress a sin. Jesus ate with, with us kind of folks. You understand what I'm saying? And, and we're not going to try to make, I'm not going to try to make me or anybody in here be something they're not. Because that's the beauty of the treasure that's in this earthen vessel. That you may know that the excellency is of God and not of me. Does, you, does that make sense? There's a treasure, there's a gift on the inside of us that can only be of God, not of our human frailty. That's why I don't try to hide and pretend I'm something I'm not. I'm, re I'm really open and honest with people. You're going to see me mess up and I'll stand before you and apologize if I mess up. It doesn't bother me. Why? Because I know I'm in right standing with him. And so as long as I'm right this way and standing on righteousness, then it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. <laughs> Do you understand? Because if you're in right standing with God, you know who you are in him, your identity is full, and you no one can come in and move you off that foundation. Does that make sense? 
Okay, and so 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That's a beautiful portion of Scripture, that 1 Corinthians 2. You need to go read that from uh, not just there, but that, that whole uh, portion there. Um, because we have the mind of Christ. We possess his perceptions. Did you know that? But if your own mind, will, and emotions are, are, are not healed, then you're filtering it through that and not through the mind of Christ. That's why you've got to think like a Hebrew. It's called kingdom mindset, not church mindset. Oh, I'll step on some toes now. It's also to know the times and season. It's the Issachar anointing. Issachar was one of the tribes of Israel, and they were the smallest tribe, but they knew when Israel was supposed to move. They knew the timing of it. We got to move now, or we got to move over here. Or we, they just knew what they, what they were supposed to do. First Chronicles 12.32 says, and, and of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. 200 chiefs, that's all they were, 200. Did the other tribes were 10,000s. And all their kinsmen were under their command. You see, not everybody gets the Issachar anointing. We're kind of strange people. It's important to stay in the timing of God because when a car jumps time, how many of you know that? It's not going to run if a car jumps time. You know how to adjust the timing on a car? An oh, old school car? Yeah, not, I don't know how to do it now, but I have an old car, and I still have an old car. It was my first car. It was a Triumph Spitfire. And you could you adjust the timing on it, easy. And so it would jump time a lot. It's probably because of the way I drove it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, it, the enemy's plan is to get us out of time. Why does he want you out of time? Somebody answer me. Come on. I'm teaching today. Get you off balance. So you'll be discouraged when it come forth. Amen. Did you hear what she said? So you'll be discouraged. And you know what? There's always an open heaven over us. When Jesus left this earth, there was an open heaven. It never closed. When he came up, when he was baptized in the spirit and the heavens opened, it, there's never a scripture that said it closed. So it's open at all times. The thing is, are you under it? It's like when you walk up to a, a door, like at Walmart, and there are automatic doors. If you're not in the right alignment... With that eye, that sensor, the door won't open, right? And so sometimes if we're not in right alignment with the timing, because so many times I'm in such a hurry, I run up to the door and I have to back up and go. Have you ever had to do that? Yeah, so that it would open. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so if, we, if we're in the timing of the Lord, and it takes patience, it takes self-control. It, it takes wisdom to stay in that place. Because everything in you from here in your brain is screaming, this doesn't make sense. But everything in your spirit is saying, uh, but this is what the Word says. And you have to weigh it. It's that wrestling within ourself. You're going to be the new creature and have the mind of Christ? Or are we going to choose to stay in our carnal thinking and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? It can be good, but you're still, it's still just good knowledge. I want it from the tree of life. I don't know about y'all, but I need life on the inside of me. There's too much crap I have to battle with. Sorry if, if that offended you. Because that's what it is. That's why I got my boots on today. So the enemy's plan is to get us out of time. Daniel 7.25 said, And he shall speak words against the Most High God, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change the time of the sacred feast and holy days and the law. And the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, two times and a half, three and one half years. Revelation 3, 1 uh, through 6. 13, 1 through 6. You can go and read that if you want to. So the, de the devil's job is he wants to speak against the Most High, speak words against him, and he wants to wear us out. How does he wear us out? By changing the times. If we don't understand the times of God, this, listen, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so when we're not thinking with the mind of Christ, come on, somebody, it says we can possess the mind of Christ. That means we can have his perceptions. That means we can have his perceptions. And it, we don't press in to get them. That's the point. We mistake our own opinions as revelation light. 
or we get a revelation and misinterpret the revelation that God's trying to give us and start judging or discerning someone. Come on. Remember the, la the one that I talked about, the first redemptive gift that I talked about was prophecy or prophets. Remember? You'll get into that. Um, Isaiah 66, 22 and 23 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will, um, which, which I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. And it shall be from that one, that one new moon to another new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh will come to worship me before, says the Lord. Now this is talking about, do you see this? The new heavens and the new earth. So in the new heavens and the new earth, this is after Jesus comes back and everything is made new again. In the new heavens and the new earth, we will still practice this. Rosh Kadesh, the new moon. That's what the new moon it means. Isn't that something? And so, guess what we're doing right here? Do you know what this earth is? Do you know what this life is? Say it. Come on, brother. Practice. That's it. If we're not, if we're not doing it here, we're going to have trouble when we get there, right? Come on. We're just passing through here. Sometimes and I think he don't let, you, let us go until we get what we're supposed to get. Come on now. Did you know that, that heaven is just life? A continuation of this? You think we're just going to go sit on a cloud and eat bonbons? It's life the way that God intended it to be from day one. Hallelujah. Okay, y'all tr don't pull that out of me. <laughs> you pull stuff out of me. <laughs> no, that's for another time. Rosh Kadesh is the Hebrew name for the new moon celebration or head of the new month. The Hebrew calendar is the lunar calendar, and it's what farmers use for planting and harvesting. So if we want the harvest, we have to know the time. And so you have to do, it's really the solar and the lunar coming together. How many of you are hunters? And you hunt. How many of you look at your little app on your phone, see the time when you're supposed to go out and harvest a deer, right? It has to do with where, how the solar, how long the day is, and how long, the, and if the moon is full or not. I mean, that's how you learn to harvest. Did you know on a full moon, if a woman is pregnant near her, pregnant near her delivery date, if it's on a full moon, she gonna have that baby. It's a fact. I studied to be a midwife, and on the, the full moons, which was a full moon, not the new moon. The new moon is just a barely little sliver. But the full moon, because of the gravitational pull in the earth, will literally make them go into labor. It's a fact. Some of this is practical stuff, and we miss it because we get so super spiritual, we're no earthly good. And we're spirit, soul, and body. And you cannot leave one of them out or your discernment is, uh, is, is, is faltered in some way. It's diminished in some way. You have to look at all of them. Spirit, soul, and body. You've got to look at the physical. You've got to look at the soulish. And you've got to look at the um, spiritual. I'm sorry, there's feathers falling and I see them. <laughs> Isaiah states that in the new heavens and the new earth, we will continue these celebrations. We celebrate at the beginning of every month the blessing that is associated with that month based upon the tribe associated with that month. We look at the weakness of that tribe as well. And if, the, if we identify with the weakness, then we press in for deliverance. The tribes are linked according to how they traveled in the wilderness. And by studying the tribes, we have the ability to choose to walk in the blessing cycle and not the curse. We bring a first fruit offering, and it's a first fruit principle. It's, we're going to bring the first of what we have at the beginning of the month to sow into the blessing of what the month and tribe represent. So, and also for any stronghold from any weakness to be broken. It's really just a monthly Bible study. That's really what it is, if you want to look at it that way. First fruit is a principle of looking at all that you have been given and give the best uh, uh, and first of it to the Lord. It's not the tithe, it's an offering. So it's above the tithe. It's something that you give above a tithe. In other words, it's just the first, like if they, when they harvested the, the wheat harvest, that what they would do is they would take the very first thing that they harvested, the, they would take that sickle and they would go across it and they would take the first handful, the first bundle, and present it to the Lord. 
that's what they would do. It's just the first, right off the top. Most people do that as a tithe. They do that with their tithe. And so don't get caught up in all of this and, and like get in your head, oh my God, I got to do this and I got to do that. When it becomes legalism, then it's not the Lord. That, that's a fact. When it becomes law, it's not the Lord. And, you, and we'll try to do that because it's not, I'm just telling you why we do it. And can I tell you, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 10 says, lean not. Uh, lean on and trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. That means it's going to heal your nerves. How many of you have got anxiety and deal with anxiety and depression? This is what it's talking about. It's going to heal your nerves. It's going to heal the marrow of your bones. The marrow is what produces your blood. Did you know that? So if we get our marrow, the very root of it, that's why it says in Hebrews 4.12, the words alive, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul from the spirit, the bone from the marrow. Hmm. Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with first fruits of all your income. That's it, right there. The first fruits of your income, you're supposed to take that and give it. So, so shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. Can I tell you a secret? I'm going to talk to you about Papa Craig for a minute. This is something he taught me a long time ago with this. He said, what I do is I look at what I want it to be for this next month, not what I have. That's what he says. And I give according to that. If I want to bring in, I'm just going to throw out a number. We don't bring in this kind of money, just saying. $10,000 this next month, or seven, or five. I want to bring in $5,000 this next month. Lord, I'm going to give a first fruits offering of 500 bucks. Because that's what I'm expecting. And don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever things that a man sows, that shall he also reap. And if you're trusting and believing in that, he's going to do it for you. This is the one thing that the Lord said, test me and prove me. See if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. I learned a long time ago, you can't outgive God. You can take a first fruit offering when you've got family members that are lost in an addiction or don't know the Lord. You can give a, a first fruit offering over them. If they have an issue right here, did you know you can give offering for your people, for your friends, for your brothers, for your sisters, for your mama, your daddy? Did you know that? You can look at the, the weaknesses in these, in, these, in these tribes and the blessings in these tribes and say, I see that in my family line, and so I'm giving an extra offering this month because I want that broken off my family line. And we stand in the gap. That's called intercession. That's what Abraham did. When he stood in the gap for Lot, you know, when he said, is that if I find 25 righteous, will you save them? And it got down to five or one. Do you remember? Do you remember the story? And he was standing in the gap for, between Sodom and Gomorrah. But you know what? He was standing between God and Lot. Not the devil in Lot. Mm. So see, what happens when you give on behalf of your family, you're standing between God and them so that they will walk in the blessing. Because what you're saying is, I'm giving for them so that they'll be obedient, so that the blessing will follow them. Does that make sense? Because when mercy comes, can I just tell you something about mercy? And we misunderstand it. We think mercy's getting what we want. Mercy comes, and on the other side of mercy is judgment. The ark was mercy. Many died, but f and the remnant was, was spared. Did you hear me? 
So when mercy begins to happen, and it is the currency of heaven, and we need to be crying out for mercy for our family, for this nation, for the nations of the world, that they become sheep nations. And see, we all worry, we're always usually worried about me, myself, and I, or my four and no more. But let me tell you something. When you broaden your scope of how you're praying and who you're praying for, when you start praying for your family, when you start praying for those that are around you in your sphere of influence, you're going to see the Lord change you. That's where deliverance comes. King Arthur, on his round table, do you know what he said? You know what was on it? Y'all do know there was a real King Arthur, right? Okay. And the knights of... Do you understand? Do you know what was written and inscribed on his round table? In serving others, we are set free. One of the best quotes I know. Because it's so scriptural. And so when we begin to do that on behalf of our family, listen, we'll see God's hand move. <clears throat> now, I'm not, that's all that I want to do right there. I wanted to lay that groundwork for you so that you would see. Does anybody have questions? Do you understand why we do what we do? Okay? Now, I want to read something to you about this month. This month is Shabbat, the month of Shabbat. And I'm going to read to you. I don't know. If you're not on our email list, you need to get on our email list. At the first, it, it, you can go to our website and sign up. Because every month, we send out what we call the Elisha Times. And we have different people in this church that write in it. Now, I write an article in it called Established. And so I'm going to tell you right now what this, what this month means. I'm going to read it to you. As we transition out of the month of Tevet which is what we're coming out of and we're going into Shabbat, where we, where we began to see the things that were out of order in our personal lives and in the lives of those in our spheres of influence, we will bring them onto the foundation of righteousness in Shabbat. So how many of you this past month, these past few weeks, have just been seeing all kinds of things out of order? Raise your hands. Guess what? That's because that's God's time in the earth. When you begin following this stuff, see, then you don't, you're not moved up and down like I was saying at the first. You're not taken off guard and you're not freaking out because you're seeing all this stuff. You're like, oh, okay, this is what God is showing me. And then you learn how to pray and stand in the gap. And you're not moved by your emotion. Do you understand? When I first started doing this, I did it for two years before I ever started teaching it. And I want you to know it set me free. It brought me, and this is why I'm going to teach. This is why I'm teaching on these. These, and I wanted to put this together because this is um, contributing to others who you are. These grace gifts, the redemptive gifts, the motivational gifts that we that I've been teaching on. They, this brings you into that. Studying this, and the tribes, and the and the and the, the seasons, it brings you into who you are. It brings you into your identity. Okay, and so. The letter for this month is, is it's Sitkanu, and it symbolizes the righteous one. It's associated with the Lord our righteousness, or Jehovah Sitkanu. Jeremiah 23, 6, you can look it up, y'all want to write it down, Jeremiah 23, 6. That's where it was first mentioned. Oh my goodness, I just lost my place. Well, isn't that special? Hmm. Did I just... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Doesn't matter, I know it. Jeremiah 23, 6. Obviously, I'm going to preach. Jeremiah 23, 6 is where the Lord began to, fight, to say, He revealed Himself as Jehovah's sick canoe, the Lord our righteousness. And so when He does that, righteousness only just basically means that you're in right standing with the Lord. That means you have a repentant heart. It's that simple. I mean, David slept with another man's wife, got her pregnant, then had her husband killed, and he was the apple of God's eye. 
Come on now. He sought God with everything. And you know why he was the apple of God's eye? Because the minute he was convicted of it, he repented. He didn't wait. He turned and he went the other way. That's right standing with God. Doesn't mean you're not going to mess up. It doesn't mean that things are not going to happen in your life. It means that you are quick to repent when you're convicted of it. That's grace. Thank God for His grace. None of us would even be sitting here. You know? Um, yeah, so I don't, um, I don't know what else I was going to say about the month. Other than Asher, uh, it's associated with the tribe of Asher. And uh, I can't find where I wrote about it. Oh, well, the... Hmm. I was going to try to find it again, and it, it, I don't know. It's just gone. I think I may have accidentally deleted it, but it's okay. I have it in my other stuff. I'll just read it to you out of, out of here. This is not what I had, but it'll work. Um, Asher was blessed, blessed with the potential for every earthly blessing. He had abundant food, mineral resources, many children, peace with the other tribes, and the favor of God, and security from enemies. And so that's a great blessing. Would you give me my iPad right there? There's something I wanted to share, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, well, it's in my, my, my computer right here, so all i got to do is bring it up. The, the Lord revealed the name Sick Canoe and the Lord our righteousness. In Romans 3.22, it tells us that the righteousness of God comes by believing in Jesus, and it is meant for everyone who believes. So this month, righteousness must become our foundation. Righteousness simply means that you are in right standing with God. It means that you have a repentant heart. So as we've seen what's out of order and we begin to bring those things before the Lord, we will see His righteousness come and produce fruitfulness and multiplication in our life. You see, that's what, I mean, He had the favor of God on Him. Asher did. And so when we bring things onto that right foundation, you will see multiplication. You will see fruitfulness in your life. You will not be barren, but you will produce what the Lord wants you to produce. In other words, you're going to become, you're going to become who He said you are. Amen? Amen? So this is a month. Um, in short, we will see growth in those things and in the people in our spheres of influence. This is a month to regroup with those that are in your sphere and be aware of who is blooming, quote unquote, and who needs to bloom. Huh. So if you're a leader in here, you need to look at the people that are in your sphere of influence and you need to say, okay, who's blooming? And who needs to bloom? Let me help them. Yeah? Okay. This is why I tell people, I watch you. I watch what you do. I watch what you're doing, what you're involved in, how you show up, what you're faithful to. Come on. Because if you're doing nothing, you have no understanding. That's Proverbs, what I've been teaching about wisdom. You can have wisdom, but if you don't understand it, understanding means you're building, you're doing something. You're building your, yourself, your son. It's a house. And when you're building, when you're moving forward, when you're advancing, this is why we follow this, because it's advancing. When you begin to advance who you are, moving in the things of God, then I can see the gift that's on the inside of you. If you sit on your butt and never do anything, guess what? Nobody sees what you are. It will never manifest. Faith without works is dead. So as we do this, we will begin to see our blessings are not just here. I mean, are not just on the way, but our blessings are here. And that's what we're going to declare this month. Not that our blessings are coming. Our blessings are here. Do you hear me? Say it. Our blessings are here. Yes. This month is associated with the tribe of Asher. Moses blessed Asher with the blessing of children, and this tribe is one of the most numerous. Isn't that something? Moses also blessed him with being acceptable to his brothers. Asher was, was blessed, and the potential for every earthly blessing, this is from the book right here, abundant food, mineral resources, uh, many children, peace with the other tribes, and the favor of God and security from his enemies. 
How many of you want to be secure from your enemies? Yeah. See, when you run into the, to the tower of the Lord, His righteousness are the walls that surround you. That's impenetrable. It is a stronghold around you, and the enemy can't get in. Those, um, these are great blessings that we need to press into this month. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal anything in you that would hold these blessings back from you. As He reveals it to you, ask Him to show you the root cause and to deliver you. Then simply receive His love in that area of your life, and we will shout, our blessings are here. Hallelujah. Our blessings are here. Amen? The one thing that you need to be careful of this month <laughs> is because he had so much favor on his life and because he, was, he liked the delicacies. And you have to be careful of the delicacies of the king. If you don't control your passion, they'll take you over. Yeah. And so that's why this is a good time to fast. I always fast in the month of January all the way into February. So, 